when we look at the economic status of the young Kavis, um, uh, the generations, we still see an impoverished community. For some of the young Kavis speakers who have begun to participate in more positive social changes, such as college education, language change rather than persistence is also found. So the two graphs in figure A clearly illustrate the lead lag relationship between more or less educated younger speakers and between the Kavis and CB speakers. So language change happens when people begin to talk to people who do not talk like them. The CBE speakers who had access to the advantages associated, to the, associated with the economic boom began working, going to college, and otherwise engaging with speakers of our dialect. The young Cajuns returned to local form as, of Cajun English as an emblem of ethnicity. Unlike CBE speakers, the Cali speakers suffered from a desperate employment situation would led to a massive out-migration. In the study of a sample of, Afri of African-American families living in part, one of our sample communities, Aguirre found that of those who were around 18 years old, between 1960 and 1969, which like, is our middle generation in our sample, only 29% still lived in part and or the city. 54% no longer live in either part, St. Martin Parish or surrounding parishes, and 39 of those who left now live in Texas. The Guire's result of the place of residence or siblings and children of black born between 1920 and 1942 is even more astonishing. Almost half of two population, and almost half of two generations of former residents no longer live in and around parts. And of this group, 41% of those who left live in Texas in 1979. So when Louisiana areas such as Lake Charles, Shreveport are considered, this percentage rises to 50%. So the Cali speakers who stayed behind continued to live apart as a result of two important barriers which limit their full participation. First, the racial divide that marks all of these communities we have studied. And two, the French cultural identity which is viewed by many non-Creole African Americans as undermining the American, the African Americans' political struggle. Therefore, for those who left or who stayed behind, they continue to talk to people who talk like them. Thank you. Uh, 
matters that were there? Oh, well, I, I, I think I did a number in the article. I don't know if you have read the, okay, I, I gave the number, but I, right now, I, I'm talking my head like this, I don't remember. But I can just give you an example of how um, they were everywhere. Um, one of the last, um, one, of, one of the oldest censors of Black Forest Parish, uh, just after, um, uh, after when it became like a, um, a separate parish from Assumption Parish, it was like something like 1870 or something like that. And when you look at the data, um, you have something like 70% of uh, all family names, you know, are French, and 20% of all the others were well, all Irish names. So even like in these isolated places, uh, you still have, you have like Irish, but they were everywhere. Um, I, and one of the quotes that I like, that I'm in our article, is a quote by uh, C.J. Bailey, who just said eventually, okay, things come from somewhere, and if you eventually end up, the, that you have, you study a, a dialect feature in the locality, and in, um, in this locality, you also have like this um, numerous population, um, like Irish, for example, and this dialect feature is also present in their dialect, it's, it's too easy to say, oh, that can just come from Irish English. In fact, what you have to prove is that how, how could it be that it would not have been borrowed or it could be related to Irish English. So it's, it's like turning the whole thing around, and I think that it has a point. Um, if it was in old, the 19th century, uh, black and white English, and we know that English was everywhere, you know, uh, spoken by slaves or spoken by planters, and it was also in, um, in Irish English. And, you know, by 1860, Irish, um, Irish, the Irish population was the most numerous ethnic population in New Orleans, uh, followed by the Germans and the third were the French. So um, they were really, they were everywhere. But I mean, we it's certainly need, need to be exploring, you know. Thank you. We need to move on.